Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we stopped just short of completing momentum equation derivation in full. Uh, we went up to a point where we derived the momentum equation up to the differential form and the integral form. I just have to give some inferences from those. Okay. We had uh, from the large differential, large uh, control volume, we had this relation. and from small very thin control volume we have this relation okay. now we have to find the link between these two but before that i'll just give you one more aside so that you get comfortable with compressible flows so i'll go back and integrate this expression when i integrate i'll rearrange this uh, row below this dp I will write it like this, we know density is never 0, I can divide by density no problem. Okay. So, now if I integrate this, I am going to get constant which is your integration constant. So, if I say now that my density is constant irrespective of what pressure it is then I am in incompressible world, if I am in incompressible flow condition then I can take this 1 by rho outside then I will get integral 0 to p of d p will be just p. So, I am going to have p by rho here, then that looks like your Bernoulli's equation okay. that is if I assume density to be constant then I will go to a point where it becomes Bernoulli's equation, but in reality we do not know that whether it is constant or not in our case may be constant in some special situations, but mostly it is a variable because we are in compressible flow. So, because we are in compressible flows we cannot take this out of the integral just like that and so now I will have some value for this and that is going to cause some other extra terms in your Bernoulli's equation. We will look at Bernoulli's equation derived from some other point of view maybe in one or two classes later. Okay. I want to drive it in that Bernoulli's equation is only for incompressible flows that is one extra thing I will do. Now, that is one part, now the next thing I want to talk about is how, how is how are these two equations related, they are both the same momentum equation, okay. one is p plus rho u square is constant, other is d p plus rho u d u is constant. If I just integrate this in a simple world, I should get a u square by 2, but that is not there, what is going wrong? It so happens that the same answer as this density is sitting here. If I keep density is constant, it will become u square by 2, but this is not derived for density constant, okay. this is derived for full compressible flow equation, and so this will be different from this. Okay. But uh, I will tell you a quick way to derive this. If I say, uh, uh, by the way, one more assumption we have in this top one was you want to eliminate this fx variable that the force on the side walls we want to eliminate that, so we said a 1 equal to a 2, this is a very special case of constant area duct. Okay. If I say it is constant area duct, then from mass equation, this is a constant, which means now this is a constant, right. If this is a constant, now I will go and write my differential form. where this is a constant. So, now I will suddenly if I integrate this, I will get to my form which is the expression which we have up here, okay. that is the link between this and that. Typically no book uh, gives you this kind of explanation, 
just you are, you are expected to do these by yourself and figure out what is going on. Okay. But you should be trying to link everything you have learnt already. Okay. Try and link everything one way or the other. Okay. So, ideally the full momentum equation for any area condition is going to be this uh, inside this we have assumed that it is constant area f x does not matter and the uh, a is are all the same. So, you will finally end up with this relation that is what you got to this I put a 1 square instead of u 1 square it should be u 1 square here I have done it right I just switched the terms you know multiplication is commutative ok. So, this is about momentum equation now we will start looking at energy equation we will go to a fresh section ok. Again we are going to start doing the same exercise starting with the full integral form the original first time we wrote the conservation form we will start from the conservation form of energy equation and uh, that looks like this. and this is going to be equal to q dot n minus w dot out and there is a pressure work which I did not take into account minus integral over surface p u dot n d s. this was one of the forms of energy equation which we wrote at the beginning. Now, we are going to use this expression and I am going to take some arbitrary control volume this is my section 1 this is my section 2 and I am going to say flows going along my control volume here and here it is perpendicular. So, here u dot n is 0. u dot n is 0 there which means there is no energy flux terms through these sections energy is just convected along the surface, but not across the surface. Now, the next thing is q n we will keep q n as is let us assume there is some heat transfer somewhere inside does not matter same thing with work out we can keep it or remove it depending on my convenience we will keep it for now, but uh, we will remove it after we write the integral integrated form we already said that we are looking at only steady problems. So, this term goes to 0 and I am going to say u dot n is 0 for those two surfaces, but the other two surfaces here n is this way. So, u dot n is uh, minus u minus magnitude of u you get to that there it will be plus of magnitude of u. Okay. So, if I use this and write it all together I will write a rearrange it left hand side to right hand side q dot n will be equal to I am neglecting this w out currently let us say there is no turbine work or shaft work or anything like that in our problem. Okay. So, I am going to have just terms from this integral which will be rho u a times this quantity and that should be at section 1 which will have a minus sign. So, rho 1 u 1 a 1 this is one term then the other term will have a plus sign because their vectors are same direction should be rho 2 u 2 a 2 times e 2 plus u 2 square by 2 that is that term only other term remaining is this 
I have taken it across across the other side of Q. So, it will be plus. Now, I have to look at this term again u dot n it is 0 in here is it logical pressure is acting this way is it not having any work done on the system it looks like there is no work done on the system due to pressure is it logical from this section of course it is going to give some value here and here it so happens that force is applied perpendicular to the velocity and f dot u is power so, because of that it is going to be eliminated actually the force is P times n vector times d s that is your force pressure times area and area has a perpendicular direction to it. So, pressure is acting perpendicular to that area dotted with the velocity is your work done rate of work done that is what it is supposed to be. Okay. So, it so happens that uh, force is acting there, but it is useless for us remember if there is shear force along this line it will add or remove energy from the system okay. currently we are assuming that there is no viscous forces we are saying no shear forces possible we already removed the other terms we said the tau x y terms we removed from here when we derived this whole integral equation okay. so if we have that we will have some other term extra here non zero terms now we will have only contributions on this surface and the final output surface only these two surfaces so again i'm going to say it's minus u here yes in real case there is shear force uh, we won't deal with it right now in our simple compressible flow scores when we are thinking about shear forces on the wall it will be a small factor compared to the huge amount of energy that is passing through okay. there will be a little bit of power wasted against friction on there and that will be relatively small unless you have friction very very high we will deal with friction with uh, flows with friction after some time okay. as of now we will assume frictional flows not much effect on my energy that is my assumption. So, I am not having that extra term which is supposed to be here friction term we will not have it for now. Okay. Now, I will go here and I will just substitute these terms in here this is already a minus u with uh, this coming this side it will stay as minus finally. So, I am going to write that term as P 2 A 2 times U 2 minus P 1 A 1 times U 1. So, I have this many terms here I want to rearrange this simplify it a little bit. So, I will take this and then look at my mass equation which was rho 2 u 2 a 2 is equal to m dot my mass flow rate. So, I will write this as m dot by rho 2 similarly I can write this as my m dot the mass flow rate by rho 1 I did not use subscripts m dot 2 and m dot 1 because it is supposed to be same mass flow flowing through that is my continuity equation I am saying mass flow rate is constant from section 1 to section 2 that is also taken into account here ok. So, I am just having m dot and that is going to simplify it like this similarly if I look here rho 1 u 1 a 1 that is my m dot directly right this whole term will become my m dot same thing here this is also the same m dot. Now, I will incorporate all these changes and write my equation again there. So, I have this form now uh, recall that uh, h the enthalpy per unit mass is equal to E plus P V where V is my specific volume which is 1 by rho right 
this is volume per mass which is reciprocal of mass per volume. So, I get to that form. So, now I can rewrite this whole thing club together I get to simplified form like this. It does not have any a 1 a 2 sitting there directly except through this m dot expressions. Okay. It is still valid for any areas a 1 and a 2 need not be the same they are they could be different and it will still be taken into account inside here automatically. Okay. It is still sitting inside your m dot term. Now, we will go and uh, implement that particular assumption he was talking about, uh, we are assuming always that heat transfer is 0. So, now we will go and say at this moment we will go and say this is equal to 0, I came up to this point because I want to show that in case we have heat transfer my enthalpy may be different from initial to final, if that is not the case enthalpy need not change that is what I wanted to say. Okay. Now, for convenience we will start introducing one variable H naught. H naught, it is called the stagnation enthalpy, we will go deal with it later, it is given as H plus u square by 2 directly from here. If I write it like this, then my expression becomes extremely simple, that is why I am doing this. So, if I use this inside here. I get to this as my energy equation, it is extremely simple form of energy equation. Especially now if I say my heat transfer into my volume is 0, then I am going to say H naught remains constant that is my stagnation enthalpy does not change, okay. it is very specific. Okay. We will go deal with why this is called stagnation after some time, but I will just tell you a quick answer. If I say my enthalpy does not, stagnation enthalpy does not change. I can go to a condition where I will slowly decrease this velocity and go to 0 velocity. Enthalpy, the energy from kinetic energy, this is actually kinetic energy per unit mass, right? mu square by 2 divided by m, okay. and this is your enthalpy, the CPT term. Okay. This is again per mass, enthalpy per mass. So, what you are having is total enthalpy per mass. If I slowly take energy from kinetic energy and give it to this, keeping this constant then I am going through some particular process where I am taking my fluid to rest, okay. some imaginary process by the way, it is not a real process, it is not happening in flow really, I am going through this some imaginary process taking it to rest and if I go through that condition, that particular condition of taking the flow to rest, the final state is called stagnation condition, that is flow is stagnating, it is not moving. Okay. So, that is how you got to this name, we will go deal with it more later. Now, I will go back and derive this expression in the other form, actually it can be written for calorically perfect gas as I um, will write it in terms of Q n right now, like this also if I assume calorically perfect gas, right. I am saying C p is the same for any temperature. And so, I can pull out C p out of this and I will just have T 0 2 minus T 0 1, stagnation temperatures they are called. So, I will keep it like this, we will go for more explanation of this later. We will continue with derivation of energy equation, but now we will derive it from thin slice control volume. Again we will go back to this small thin control volume and I am going to say this is A, this is A plus D A, P, P plus D P etcetera, you can write it for u, rho, uh, u, u, u plus d u, rho, rho plus d u, rho d rho everything. Okay. Now, I will take the other form which we just derived and then write it here for this control volume. We know that uh, that particular expression we wrote is true for every control volume. So, we will use apply that energy equation for this control volume. So, I am going to write it as I 
have to think about it a little bit. I'll say this way. Okay, I have this form. This is equal to h plus dh. How did I get to this? I am going to say it is t plus dt uh, here. I multiply this with Cp, multiply this with Cp to get to this form. This is your Cpt, this is your Cp times t plus dt. That is all I am having plus u plus du square by 2. Of course, I am having u, u plus du also. So, I am using that expression here. Now, if I expand these and uh, neglect the du square term saying it is a very very thin slice du square is extremely small compared to all the magnitudes of other variables then we will get to a simplified form and uh, you will also see that uh, h plus u square by 2 will get cancelled with this particular h plus u square by 2 okay. So, I will have a simpler form I will go to dh by the way I have to put a ok I will deal with it after this I will come back to it dh plus u du q dot n by m dot I am having as of now we will keep it like this, but now I will say this is a very thin slice control volume which is a very differential control volume and if I am going to say there is some energy added inside that control volume per unit mass then this is a differential heat added. So, I will put a d in front of it I am going to say it is a differential thing because it is a small control volume ideally I should have done it here itself ideally I should have put it here itself it is a very thin slice I am going to say it is a very small amount of heat added. So, that is what is given here okay. of course, I am keeping all this, but I am immediately going to throw it away the next line I am going to say q dot n is 0. Okay. So, I will write another form keep this form also if you want you can keep this as d q n and set it equal to 0 this is also fine oh by the way it is d q n by m dot always q dot n by m dot or you can write it as q is defined as a new variable per unit mass q if you want okay. currently we are keeping it as just q actual energy. Okay. So, we have derived things in different forms finally, let us go and do a little more okay. uh, let us look at it from the point of view of constant entropy condition people will say that Bernoulli's equation I am again going back to Bernoulli's equation people will say that Bernoulli's equation is an energy conservation equation in some books, but uh, we derived Bernoulli's equation just uh, today's class and we got it from momentum equation. Okay. So, are both the same momentum is not same as energy, but we are getting momentum equation giving you Bernoulli's equation instead of energy equation. But Bernoulli when he derived he just looked at it as potential energy kinetic energy of the gap uh, of the fluid he said and based on that he derived stuff okay. he assumed it to be incompressible flow ok. We will go back and see that again ok Bernoulli's equation is for incompressible flow, but he derived it from energy equation ok that is what I am going to focus here of course, we already proved that from momentum equation we can get to Bernoulli's equation if we assume density is constant that is we assumed incompressible flow that is already valid okay. now what we have to see next is we derived it from momentum equation Bernoulli originally derived it from energy conservation are they both the same it so happens that uh, they come out to be the same if you have inviscid incompressible isentropic flow actually inviscid isentropic flow is fine ok you will get to that point you will get to that special condition that uh, energy equation can be derived from momentum equation and mass equation if you say the flow is isentropic okay, 
uh, isentropic and incompressible. These two, if I say, I can write it the other way, and you will get to that expression. Okay. We'll uh, we'll look at it from uh, isentropic condition. I'm going to say T d s equal to zero. We already started using this thermodynamics. Remember, this is next time we are going to use it, and of course we write it in this form in terms of enthalpy from now on this is a common form but we don't like it we write it in terms of density we write it in terms of density okay now of course you should know that uh, we have already used uh, p equal to rt inside here in deriving this right in thermodynamics class itself the beginning review class itself we already substituted d e plus p d v with p v equal to r t to get to this form this specific form p equal to rho r t we used to get to this form we already used that remember that gas equation is already used inside here okay now the next thing i want to think about is uh, substitute this and simplify this expression i am going to say this is equal to zero i am going to say this is cp dt so i'm going to write it as cp dt minus dp by rho equal to 0 i have this expression now i'm going to substitute momentum equation into this okay i'll substitute momentum equation into this what was my momentum equation i erased that already anyways this was my momentum equation already so now I'll just substitute this inside there, and see what happens. dP by uh, rho happens to be equal to minus du u uh, u du. Okay. So if I substitute this in uh, that inside here, I'm going to get CP dT plus u du equal to zero. Okay, I'm getting to this form. Remember, I started from isentropic. I said it is isentropic, I said P equal to rho RT I am using, I am saying I am using momentum equation, I did not use energy equation, but I finally ended up with my energy equation, you can compare it with this expression, okay. it so happens that this and this expression are coming out to be the same, this is what I was just now talking about, energy equation is now not an independent conservation equation it is a dependent equation it can be obtained from some other equations a combination of other equations okay that is what we are ending up with okay so uh, is this right always it is not right always it is true for the special case of come back here if you look at here dq is 0 only if my dq is 0 I can link this and that equation like this otherwise I cannot okay. it is a special case. So, I am going to say if I have a special flow which is isentropic no heat transfer nothing no friction nothing and I can use mass equation and uh, P equal to rho r t mass equation momentum equation P equal to rho r t and d s equal to 0 four equations I have used and I get energy equation in here okay. that is what I am ending up with finally okay. is this right. So, we will go look at it from math logic point of view next how many variables do we have in the flow think about it while I erase this three variables I do not think it is right but anyways let us label them so give me variables pressure temperature anything else density anything else it is a flow velocity anything else what is that volume is actually related to a density in a way of course if you want extensive quantity I have to give volume separately but we are thinking all intensive properties right now entropy that is the question okay entropy or heat okay I will put a question mark here as of now we will keep it like this now how many equations do we have three equations let us look at them mass momentum 
energy anything else entropy relation anything else ideal gas law p equal to rt I have all these equations, I have 5 equations, if I say my q is 0 or my flow is isentropic, I do not have this variable as a variable really, I know the value of this always, it is not an unknown in my problem. If that is the case, then I have only 4 variables in my flow situation, but I have 5 equations possible. So, one of them should be redundant or one of them should become useless equation in a sense it is not going to give you any new information okay. I just showed you that energy equation can be derived from all the others of course I can now start proving something else if I want I can take these three and get to entropy relation does not matter they are all interdependent there is only four independent relations in them that is the special thing about this okay. there are five relations possible in theory but they are interrelated because there is only 4 variables in my problem. But if I have some other special thing like say there is friction, so there is entropy change, now this equation matters, it is no more that simple T d is equal to 0, it will be something more, there will be a friction related term coming up here d h naught will not be 0, so there will be extra term coming here, in which case this becomes a special relation. Now this and this linked will not give the same expression, they will give something different. So, that is what you need to think about in a special case where I am having isentropic flow and no heat transfer that kind of simple assumption when I say isentropic flow it could have some heat removed and friction which produces entropy that can make entropy 0 overall if you want. I can add entropy by creating friction and uh, remove entropy by removing heat then my flow may have constant entropy that is not the case we are looking at here we are looking at q0 as 0, if there is such a case then these are the only primary variables, 4 variables all I need are 4 equations, 4 independent equations. If I have 5 all of them valid equations, we should know that one of them must be redundant equation, law of nature unless we have missed a variable here, that is also a possibility, sometimes you may miss a variable, in this case we have not missed any variable, okay. that is the special case. So, to summarize I have given you a whole set of equations in two different forms we derived, I will erase this and start tabulating that, you have it separately written in your notebook so that you can always come to this page when you need these equations. Okay. Mass equation we have two forms. rho u a is constant that is one form, other form is so one is a integrated form, one is a differential form, we derived this last class, I am just tabulating it together here one place, next will be momentum, momentum equation we had several forms. P1 A1 plus rho 1 U1 square A1 is equal to P2 A2 plus rho 2 U2 square A2. This was one form for A1 equal to A2, we said P plus rho U square equal to constant. p plus rho equal to rho u square is equal to constant also we said and on the other side we had just one simple expression very easy to remember that is for momentum. Now we will write energy, in case of energy We had this expression, we derived this just today, 
just just recently and uh, in case q equal to 0 